So thanks for posting that excerpt. Um, it's always interesting to hear a perspective that you don't agree with because it, um, the more I hear of it, the better I can formulate exactly what it is that I'm disagreeing with. Because uh, it seems to me that when we take the computational view of, of cognition, um, we're adopting a metaphor to understand thought and the way the human mind works, which forces a dualism upon us. The dualism between Steven Pinker's um, understanding that he obviously is conscious. It's, he said it's the one thing he's most sure of, that he is conscious. And yet his computational theory of how the mind works can offer no explanation for that. Yet that same computational definition of mind is somehow enough uh, and somehow describes everything there is to describe without leaving anything out. I don't understand how he takes both of those perspectives and is able to maintain sanity as a human being. Because he's saying, oh, I, of course I exist and I'm conscious and it's the most sure thing uh, that I know. And yet, as a scientist who studies this objective external world out there that can be mapped, symbolically, because basically he's saying the brain is a symbolic processing uh, computer and it's not alive. There's no experience. It's just code being crunched. But see, he said that he's conscious at the same time, so I don't understand how he is taking these two contradictory positions. Because for me, when I come to realize that, yeah, I'm conscious, and not only that, but I can have experiences which have nothing to do with this physical world. I can go to sleep and dream of being able to fly or being in this fantastic uh, imaginary realm where things are possible which are not possible here on Earth. And so there's, there's this whole experiential realm of consciousness. And it's easy to say, well, it's just a figment or a result of your brains, your neural structures, uh, your neural wiring and like, the electrical and chemical signals going off in your skull. Um, but when you have an experience, a psychic experience like this, not meaning you can read people's minds, just that it's, you're totally in, immersed in your psyche no longer in this physical world. When you have an experience like that, that while you're having it convinces you that it's more real than even this world is. I mean, I've had experiences um, on certain psychedelics which were otherworldly, but which at the same time felt more real, more intense, uh, more true than any other experience I've ever had. I've had lucid dreams that felt almost more lucid than reality. And so if consciousness, our internal subjective experience, is capable of creating that, even if it is an illusion, what gives us the assumption that it isn't consciousness isn't also creating the illusion of the physical world? Why do we assume that this is what's most real? world that we can see the surface of and you know physicalism is a very um, it's a position which is easy to take because it provides such simple explanations really and certainly some um, reductionistic uh, models are very complicated but the essential um, method for how you're going to break down this problem is the same. It's just a calculus and you divide up the parts until you can label each part's job uh, in the system and then you say that I have described the phenomenon. Well, not only that I have described it, but I have explained it. This is what the phenomenon is. But in Pinker's case, or in any of the computationalist cognitive scientists from their perspective, um, 
they're totally leaving out consciousness and saying all we need to know to understand the phenomenon is the external surface and our symbolic measurement of that surface. So in other words, the maps that we make of the way the neural patterns structure themselves and how that uh, correlates with certain thought patterns and such. Um, knowing that, we have then explained thought. I don't think that that is the case, though. I think reductionism is a sort of um, you're fooling yourself into thinking you've explained something when really you've just drawn an elaborate map, which in and of itself functions as a great um, sort of primer for dealing with the phenomenon, but it has not explained the phenomenon. Unless we mean by explain that it has laid it out on a plane, as in drawn it, drawn it out on a map or listed it out on a page in text, but it hasn't made the phenomenon go away, as if consciousness isn't always going to be this mysterious, not necessarily problem, but a phenomenon that we're always going to be faced with and can never know entirely, because if we knew it entirely, we're basically dead. And the whole point of life is not knowing what's going to happen next. To you, not knowing what's going to happen when you die. And essentially the fact that we are alive and that we know we're going to die, that's what consciousness is all about. That's the problem right there. We were born. We have experience. We will die. And that experience disappears. We simply, we can't know. We can't explain that phenomenon until we have experienced every stage of it. So until we die, we can't know what it means to be alive. And I think that's what it really takes to get out of the physicalist model, the rationalist model, the reductionistic model or, or worldview. You have to have a transformation of your consciousness, your experience of the world, you, you have to die while you're still alive in a sense. And, you know, I don't know how that happens to people or why certain people do become spiritual because they have an experience of some kind, but it seems like physicalists, rash, rationalists lack that experiential um, gift. Not that they're lacking, they're not lesser humans. I'm just saying, obviously, because of their, or you can see that their opinions are based on a certain experience that, at least from my perspective, is foreign to me. I don't understand how Stephen Pinker can think about this issue the way he does. To me, it seems so conflicted and schizophrenic that it, it would drive me crazy. And I understand the position that he takes, because it's certainly a confusing, confusing issue. But to settle on his position like he has... I couldn't settle on, on that position because it seems to me so flawed and fractured that consciousness is nothing but an extra quality of information access. But to me, that's just really taking a metaphor that the brain is a computer way too seriously. The brain is not a computer. It doesn't run on symbols literally needs to be embodied to do what it does. Not only in the skull and, and the organism, but in the world. There's so much cognition going on out there. Like, I'm not able to really think deeply and um, analytically and uh, consistently unless I'm writing. Like, if, if, if I want to do... Um, you know, really sophisticated philosophy, I have to write a paper because the external symbols that get stored out on the page, they augment my, my computation. They make my cognition um, more powerful. They aid my memory. And so most of my thought, when you get that abstract, isn't taking place in here. Certainly there's a correlation between what's going on in here and out here. But there is a structural... Uh, component of my cognition extending outside of my skull. So there, there isn't 
see the problem the hard problem of consciousness how the brain becomes mind how this this gooey stuff up here becomes my experience really requires a new way of seeing the problem you can't come to a solution that bridges the gap that is just like any other scientific theory it cannot be a theoretical um, sort of thing it has to be experiential you have to be able to see why this is not a problem at all because when you see it as a problem there's simply no way to solve it it's a koan basically and until the koan wakes you up it remains impossible <laughs>